What's up guys, it's me, Chemical Engineering Guy and we're going to continue with the topic of Mass Balance course, which is the Introduction MB number 1 We've seen MB number 0, which is essentially just like the overview of the course <coughs> Sorry about it And yeah, let's continue with the next chapter, which is essentially only two sections. The content here is section one, which is the theory, which I like to call the basics of process or chemical engineering, like the, the least stuff you need to know at least as a chemical engineer is here. We're going to see a lot of stuff like this, system, process, unit operation, this one is very famous, we're going Actually, there are courses based on this one. Streams, flows, variables, flow diagrams. This one is also very important. And finally, theory or mass balance. Now, that was only theory. We just need to learn it. Section 2 is the most important part. Because one thing is to know. Another thing is to do. We're going to do... Well, first learn some mass balance basics, like theory, how to understand the mass balance, where to start, where addition, production, consumption, accumulation in the system, all these things, we're going to watch them here. Now, once we understand the basics of mass balance theory, we're going to see some problems and exercises. These ones are the ones that are going to help you to understand. Now, let's continue with section 1. It's some basic theory in engineering and process engineering, as I told you before. It's very easy because it's just to learn. It's very important to understand it. Don't just learn it by heart. Well, at least learn it by heart if you cannot like remember. But understand. You need to understand what is. When I say a system, you need to understand what is a system, what is within, what is without, etc. Now, let's continue with the theory. The basic definitions that we're going to see are these ones here. Now, you know that like chemical processes are in general processes that involve some stuff of chemical, you know, like production, reactions, etc. Products, reactants, blah, blah, blah. We're going to see what is a unit operation, how to distinguish from other like non-unit operation things. Then streams, flows, this is essentially all the arrows you see in a process. It's, I don't know, matter being held here, matter. Then process variables, which is like pressure in the tank, temperature of the current or flow, uh, composition of A in the flow, velocity, height of the tank, etc. Now, we're going to see what is a flow diagram. This is very important because we are going to base our problems in this one. And actually, we have three, which we're going to see furthermore. Then, well, this one should be inside of this flow diagram, block diagram, etc. Then we're going to see this here, system. Probably you've seen or heard me before telling me, telling you, System, system, system. We're going to analyze these three systems. Open system, closed system, and isolated system. Actually, the most important one is this one. I will say like almost 90% of the course is here. Closed system will be the other 10%. And since isolated system imply energy, we are not going to see this in this course. You may Consider an isolated system as a closed system. And finally, we're going to see some things about mass balance. Now, let's continue. I told you we're going to see process. Let's give a formal definition of process. Process is simply a series of actions or steps taken in order, it's important, in order to achieve a particular, a particular end or product. You may see, I don't know, you have you start here, you go here, then 
you go here, you finish here, etc. I'd like you to present you a better diagram of crushing plant. Crushing plant is nothing but this process here. And one thing that I want to show you is that actually processes are made many times out of many processes. All these circles are processes and the, like, the total of these processes makes another process. But, okay, let's see. Number one is you need to bring the crush it. Now you need to bring the stones from the mine. Number two, you need to put them or throw them in this like band transported. Number three, you're going to crush them. But it's not like that fine, okay? We continue, we go to the impact crusher, keeps crushing and crushing. Then we bring them here. It's already crushed, then we're going to vibrate and they will go very, very finely crushed. Like you see, this is small, this is medium, and this is big. Now you see each process transporting, transporting, crushing, crushing, separating, and storage. All these processes make a whole process, which is called the crushing plant. So just take importance that you can always make sub processes inside a process. Now, let's understand the difference between a normal process and a chemical process. A chemical process is essentially, is, let me show you the meaning of Wikipedia, I like it very much, it's a chemical process, it's a method or a means of somehow changing, you need to have a change, one or more chemicals, chemicals must be involved, or chemical compounds. It can occur by itself, it's not that normal, or caused by an outside force, which we are going to give. And it always, always involves a chemical reaction. If there's no chemical reaction, it is not a chemical process. Okay? So just learn this change of chemicals, outside force, and it involves a reaction. You understand that? You were going good. Now, this is a chemical process. The production of mighty beer. I love beer. You love this, you've probably seen one before. It consists essentially in milding, mashing, lautering. This one is very important, boiling. Then comes the whirlpool. Then comes the cooling. And the most important part is the fermentation. This here that I'm sorry, making this circle here, it's the one that has the most important chemical reaction. So this one here makes the whole process a chemical process. But for example, milling is not a chemical process. Mashing probably not, it's only mixing water. It may have some chemical reaction, but it's not the main chemical reaction. The main chemical reaction comes here. And also maturing, but not that much. Filtering is only taking stuff out of the liquid and packaging does not evolve, generally. And then it goes to distribution. So this process, the whole, this whole process, it's a chemical process just because there is a fermentation here, a chemical process. Okay, now let's keep going with the type of diagram. The block diagram, maybe you know it, is the most simple one. Flow diagram is a little bit more technical, let's say if it's a tank, you might add here something more like, you will say only tank here. You say tank here also, maybe you add extra data, temperature, pressure, steel, uh, materials, etc. And this one here is like the most complete one. It will actually tell you like, oh, you have this like electronic device here, and this one goes here, this pipe is about 4 inches, and I don't know, it will be more complete. I'm going to explain them there in the next slides. Now, block diagram, easy. It's a simple diagram that shows, at a glance, the process. So no complications, I just want to see here the reactor, there's a gas separator, and a distillation. It's the most used for mass balance solving, why? Because we don't need to know how the reactor is operating, we just need to know the mass balance, what enters and what goes out. Now, gas separator, you don't need 
to know the mass separation principle that it works, you just need to know how much concentration or flow is going here, the mixed liquids, the concentrations, etc. And the distillation, you don't need to know how it operates. You don't need to know how many uh, plates do you need, how many, how much must be the diameter of the tower. No, you just need to know what goes up, what goes down, or the fit. Okay. So this is the most used because it's fast. Just if you're just interesting, interested in the mass balance, you just keep doing these ones and ignore all the ones I just draw here. Now, it's very important to include flows. This is one is the ones you need to include. These are all these arrows. Unit operations. I told you you don't need to know how they operate, but just like show them so you know. Like this box makes something magical. I like to call this like this black box because you don't know what happens there but something is happening. Let's put it there. And some extra data for example conversion. Actually you don't know how this you don't know how does it works so like how many degrees or how much energy it needs. You don't know like the reactions or etc. You just know that there's a 75% Conversion. Okay. Basic. Now let's go for the flow diagram, which is essentially the same, just with a little bit more data. For example, you have this here, you have you divide it top, bottom, you show the heat exchanger, a pump maybe, a storage center here, your main operation unit, you show this valve, etc. This is like the typical process flow. Not that much information, it's enough. I don't recommend that much to do this like a mass balance because then you will need like uh, this current then mixes and comes to this valve. Let me do a mass balance in this valve. Doesn't make sense because it's actually just entering the same and the outlet is also the same. Also in a condenser, the only thing you change is temperature. Maybe, maybe a little bit pressure, I don't think so. So just keep with the temperature, so entering here, the, the stuff entering here, the same as the outlet, so ignore that, okay? But it's important if you actually are doing like a mass balance and energy balance, you will love to have, maybe, where is the condenser, where is the heat exchanger, where is the, this one here, the boiler, etc. Now, this one here, probably you've seen it before, not, maybe not, is the most typical diagram or formal diagram you will see, the pipe and instrumentation diagram, which is P and ID, or I say just PIP. It's formal language. You can actually look just in internet P ID. You will find a lot of data like PDF or even manuals talking about what do you need. Like if you have this tip this valve, I don't know, it's a special valve, you will have to draw it like in a special manner, something like that. And this valve here is another one. And this valve here will be other, etc. For example, you see, as I, as I told you before, you can see the type of valves. They show you which type of valve, not only there's a valve, but which type of valve. You can see the piping information, this is very important, because actually Knowing the size of pipes helps you to know velocity, to know the diameter, to know maybe the friction factor being lost in here, etc. You can see more detail in the operation unit, maybe, I don't know, if this is a boiler, I don't know, you, you may see how many tubes it needs to operate. Or if you see a distillation column, you may see how many dishes does the distillation column has. And finally, but not least, automation units or equipment. These ones here are very important for safety and for control. So imagine you have a variable that is changing. You need to open and close and open and close. So if a human will do that, it will be like not that convenient. You need something automatic that controls that. And also for safety, you know, you can see you cannot like just tell a guy to sit here and say and tell them like 
Hey, can you watch? So the tank here doesn't spill up, spill out. It will be wiser if you, I don't know, just buy a laser.